long time, ladies and gentlemen. I have been looking for the best new construction homes at an affordable price. In today's video, we're gonna be stepping inside of two amazing houses that are both under $270,000. At the very end of this tour, I wanna display all of the finances on both of these properties. The, how much the price is, what the tax amount is, and then after we're gonna go straight into what your down payment and closing costs would be, and then at the very end, we're gonna go into what my recommended offer would be based off the current market conditions. Let's begin the tour, my friends. For anybody new to this channel, my name is Renzo Montiuti and I'm a real estate agent here in Central Florida. Now, before we get started with the tour of this first property, I wanna make sure you have all the details on this home, where it's located and what's nearby. So first and foremost, this home is three bedrooms, two bathrooms, 1,371 square feet with an oversized lot of 0.28 acres with a two car garage. Now this home is located here in Ocala, Florida. For anybody who's not too familiar with the state of Florida, we're gonna be a very central in the West Central Florida area, about an hour and 15 minutes from Orlando, Florida. And that's in a beautiful metropolitan city where you're gonna find the Orlando Magic, the Orlando City Soccer, the Orlando International Airport, and a beautiful downtown where you're gonna have places like Lake Eola and many other activities to do there. You also have Disney and Universal, only about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes as well. Now on the West Coast, we're gonna be about an hour and 15 to an hour and a half, similar to the drive to Orlando, but you're gonna have Tampa, Florida over there. That's where you're gonna have a few more sports teams. You're gonna have the Tampa Bay Rays, the Buccaneers, and the Tampa Bay Lightning. They also have an international airport, but something really cool about Tampa is they're only about 20 to 30 minutes from the West Coast where you can find Clearwater Beach, one of us Floridians' favorite beaches to visit just because it's on the Gulf of Mexico. The water's super calm, really warm, and the sand is really white. So Tampa is a beautiful option if you're ever here in Ocala and wanna go spend a weekend away. This home is also very close to downtown Ocala. We're only 20 minutes away, and we're also 15 to 20 minutes away from the World Equestrian Center, which is no, one of two World Equestrian Centers in the entire world. This is where people from all over the country come to participate in events and also just showcase all their beautiful horses. Also, we're gonna have all our shopping, restaurants, malls, commercial centers, only 10 to 15 minutes away. So if you like Chipotle, McDonald's, your Bonefish Grill restaurants, Margaritaville, all these different things and restaurants are gonna be only 10 minutes away from this specific home. Now, some of the important things like Publix, Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, this is gonna be about 17 minutes away from this home. So what we really, really enjoy about these properties is one, it's affordable, two, it's in a great location, and three, it's absolutely close to everything. Now, very last point I wanna to touch on about Ocala, Florida is it's growing into a beautiful metropolitan city, but it's keeping the Ocala charm. And when I say Ocala charm, it means all of the naturalistic environments that they have around here. We have Silver Springs only 30 minutes away. We're gonna have Rainbow Springs 20 to 25 minutes away. We're gonna have the West Coast only 45 minutes to an hour away. So we have a lot of nature parks, a lot of walking trails, just so much fun, natural activities to do. And if that is something that interests you, this is a perfect city that has the best of both worlds. Now, my friends, we're about to go ahead and get started with the tour. Before we step inside, just wanna invite you guys all to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you're up to date on all my newest content that's coming out. With that, my friends, let's go ahead and get inside and see this beautiful house. Come on. Boom. 
boom so here we are let's go ahead and get straight into the details of this property so first things first we're gonna have a very nice long driveway so this can fit another four to six cars here in the driveway so even if you have a truck even if you have a trailer that you want to park this is a no HOA zone here in Marion Oaks, so you're not gonna have any issues with that. Both of these properties are about five to seven minutes apart. We're in the Marion Oaks area, and more specifically, I think a better area, Marion Oaks. Uh, you're gonna be north of 484, which splits this area right in half. Um, and we're gonna be on the north side, which just means we're closer to the commercial centers and all of the fun activities. Now this specific property, you're gonna have the nice gray color scheme. You're gonna have the white paint around the windows. And what I really, really love is you're gonna have landscaping coming with the house already and this front porch. At this price point, a lot of builders aren't providing any front porch areas. And here you're gonna have a beautiful space where you can set up your chairs, your lawn chairs, enjoy the sunset, and just really have a nice cup of coffee in the morning and, and that is it. So let's get inside. So here we are stepping into the home and first feature about this home that I absolutely love is you're gonna have the laminate flooring throughout the house. There's not one single area with carpet. That's a big plus, especially for anybody who has dogs, cats, where the hair, sh where they shed, where the hair gets all over the place. You wanna make sure you don't have that type of carpet if you have dogs. So it's just one big plus that I really, really like about this property. You're gonna have this beautiful, nice big window overlooking the north side of the house and the front patio space. And we are already stepped here into the living room. So this is gonna be the nice cozy living space. They already have it set up for your cable outlets right on this wall. So you can fit, really fit as big of a TV as you want here on this wall. Your couches, your chairs, your living space, this is where it's gonna be. Now, right over here on the other side of this open floor plan, we're gonna find the kitchen. What I really like at this price point, it's that's something difficult to find, is you're gonna have the granite countertop in every space of the home, in the bathrooms, in the kitchen, and all the areas. Also, one little detail about the kitchen cabinets, these are all wood, you already have the nice handles, and you're gonna have the soft close with the cabinets. Another nice feature, you're gonna have all Whirlpool appliances coming with the home. You're gonna have your microwave, your stove. Over here is, you're gonna find your dishwasher. And right over here, we have our beautiful fridge all coming with this property. What I like about this specific kitchen is you're gonna have this extended island looking over into the front yard and into the living space. So if you're cooking, you're cleaning, whatever it is, you're gonna be able to enjoy your family face to face as well. Over here, you're gonna find your breakfast nook slash dining room area. You're gonna have nice light fixtures already coming with the home to give you some nice light. You're gonna have the back sliding glass door right next to you, so it's gonna bring in light if you don't have any blinds and it's overlooking the backyard. Maybe your kids are playing in the backyard and you wanna make sure you keep an eye out for them, everything's going well, this is perfect. You know, just sit down, relax, and keep a, a third eye on your kid. Now, let's go ahead and step into this side of the home. And right over here, we're gonna find the laundry room. So this is where your washer and dryer are gonna go. You're gonna have some nice compartment space above. And what I really like about this builder is they put sliding doors right here. So it just makes it a little bit more convenient. You don't have the door opening uh, uh, in the small spaces. Right over here, we're gonna find the two car garage. In here, you're gonna find your water heater. You're gonna have your AC air handler above. Also makes it a little bit easier for any AC mechanics um, to have access and just get working on the property. This is already gonna come with the garage door opener as well. And right over here, you're gonna have your electrical panel where you can you know, keep track of your electrical. Now, we're gonna get right across the hall and we're stepping into the master bedroom, my friends. In here, we're gonna have the same laminate flooring. You're gonna have nice tray ceilings and you're gonna have extra LED built-in lights. So there is no shortage of light and expression with this home. This fan is just the extra oomph that you need for this master bedroom. Right over here, you're gonna have the double glass windows overlooking the south side of the property, the beautiful extra large lot. And right over here, we're gonna be stepping into the master bathroom. First things first is you're gonna have the same granite countertop. You're gonna have the double vanity, the same cabinets with the soft clothes. 
Right over here, you're gonna have the sliding door uh, for the toilet space. So you wanna use the toilet, someone's taking care of their business, brushing their teeth, you guys can have that separate. And right over here, you're gonna have the walk-in shower area with all your compartment space to have all your good stuff. Now, last but not least, for the master bedroom, we're gonna have this beautiful walk-in closet. Now for a home at this price, this is very, very nice. Uh, just to have this space, even to have a walk-in closet, you can have the compartment space. You can add a few more racks down below, you know, get it from Lowe's, Home Depot, and just gives you a little bit more space and accessibility for this closet. Now we're gonna go across the hall on the other side of the home, and we're gonna check out the last two bedrooms. So if you guys are coming as a family, this is perfect for your kids, or this could be your office and other living rooms. First place is we're gonna take a left and step right into this bedroom. This is gonna be a 12 by 11 room with the same flooring. You're gonna have the sliding uh, closet doors, a nice window to give you some natural light from the south side. And now we're gonna go across the hall into the next bedroom. It's gonna have the same dimensions, 12 by 11, nice ceiling fan, same uh, closet doors, just to give you an idea what it looks like. And then right over here, we are gonna have the other window, brings in that natural light, gives it that little extra oomph. One thing I wanna touch on that this builder does a little bit differently is they really focus on getting light into the house. When you have extra light in the house, it just, it just creates a higher sense of ur uh, urgency and energy. So most builders, they might have the ceiling fan and that's it, but here they're gonna have the four LED lights on each side. Also, you're gonna have smoke detectors in each room for extra safety. In between both of these bedrooms, we're gonna find a full bathroom. Here you're gonna have the same granite countertop, cabinet space below, toilet, and instead of a walk-in shower, we're gonna have a bathtub in here with the same compartment space for all your shampoo and good stuff. Now let's go take a look at the backyard and see just how big this 0.28 acre lot is. Beautiful, now stepping into the backyard, my friends, you're gonna have this nice patio space. And this is something spectacular. For this price point, it is very difficult to get an oversized lot, anything over 0.2 to 0.25 acres. And this one is 0.28, just under 0.3 acres. This is what dreams are made of here. You're gonna have all this grass space. You can put your pool. If maybe you're somebody coming from up north or out west or the Midwest, whatever it is, you come to Florida, you want a pool. This is gonna have all the space. You can essentially put an Olympic sized pool here if you wanted to. Another cool feature is at the back of this property, you're already gonna have this white vinyl fence. So that could save you an additional one to two to maybe even $3,000 if you did wanna put a privacy fence. You're gonna have your neighbors on that side over there. And right over here, you're only gonna have nature, my friends. This is all woods, this is all land, and they could build at some point, but for right now, even if they started today, it would take about a year, year and a half for them to, to actually have a house. So for the foreseen future, you're gonna just have nature right next to you as your neighbor. And for me, that's the best neighbors you could possibly have. Now, my friends, we're gonna get into the financing at the very end of this video. So we're gonna go ahead, step over into the next house and we're gonna take a little tour of that one, get into financing on both properties, recommended offers, and all that good stuff you need to know. Let's get it. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen, in front of the second home we're gonna be taking a look at. This home boasts three bedrooms, two bathrooms, 1,341 square feet on a quarter acre of land. Now this house has different finishes, different upgrades, a lot of different things, and a different price point. So at the end of this tour of the house, 
we're gonna be talking about all the finances, so make sure to stay till the end. Now let's go ahead and get started right away. So first things first, this house is also going to have this front porch area. This is perfect for relaxing. And the cool thing is uh, behind this, or in front of this house, there are no neighbors. It's just woods, it's land, it's nature. You can see the open sky. Um, so let's go ahead and get inside. So stepping inside of this property, there are gonna be a few differences. The first thing is you're not gonna have the vaulted ceilings like the first home, but you are gonna have the nine foot four ceilings. So this home is gonna be elevated. It's gonna feel large as well as the first house. This is gonna be LVP, luxury vinyl plank flooring throughout the house. There is no carpet at all. Nice ceiling fan. You're gonna have these nice light fixtures here hanging above the kitchen island, extended island. What I do love about this kitchen is you're gonna have the farmhouse sink. Now, other features, you are gonna have the nice wood cabinets as well with the handles. This does have the soft clothes as well. All stainless steel appliances by Whirlpool, stove, microwave, refrigerator, and then dishwasher. Here's gonna be your small little pantry. It's nothing huge, but I believe all the cabinet space that you do have makes up for it. And then that is what we got here in the kitchen. Stepping right over here, it's gonna be your nice cozy breakfast nook area, dining room area with your light fixture already hanging from above. And then right where we came in from, this is gonna be our living space. What I do like is you're gonna have the nice window overlooking the front of the house as well. And really you're gonna have just a nice cozy space right here for you to hang out and relax with your family. So now we're gonna head step right over here on this side of the home and we are gonna find First of all, the garage. This is a two car garage. You're gonna have the concrete flooring, nice light, water heater, electrical panel, and the remote control garage door opener. Now, all of the homes that I show and all of the homes I recommend if you are looking to move to Florida, I recommend them to be concrete block. At the very minimum, the first floor. So if you have a two story home, you at least wanna have the first story home concrete block. The reason being is we do live here in Florida. There is storms, there are hurricanes. Um, so it is important to have concrete block homes just so it can sustain anything that comes. It's better to be safe than sorry, I believe. Right over here, we're gonna have the laundry room. This is where your washer and dryer hookup is gonna be. Here's gonna be your AC air handler. It's a cool, it's a nice plus that it's inside as well. And now we're stepping into the master bedroom. So here we're gonna have the indented tray ceilings, the nice ceiling fan, and you're gonna have this nice big glass window overlooking the backyard. You can also see the well water, which we're gonna touch up on once we go step outside. One thing I really like here is there's no door stepping into the master bath. Now, what I do recommend if you do feel you want a little bit more kind of separation from the bathroom and the, the master bedroom, you can put like a nice little barn door or maybe just put some beads or whatever it is. It can be a cool little concept you can create here. You're gonna have your double vanity, a lot of mirrors. You're gonna have these extra side um, compartments. And down below, you're gonna have your cabinets, which these should be soft closed as well. And they are indeed. Right over here, you're gonna have the duo toilet and the walk-in shower with the nice ceramic backsplash. And then right across, we are gonna have the walk-in closet. This is a good, good amount of space right here. And yeah, so this is the master bedroom, master bathroom. And now let's get over to the other side of the home and take a look at what we got. So stepping into the very first bedroom, this is gonna be 12 by 11 feet, same dimensions as the guest rooms in the first home that we saw. You're gonna have the nice sliding, or you're gonna have the nice sliding opening doors for the closet. Right over here, you're gonna have your window, uh, ceiling light, and that is pretty much it, what we got in here. Here we're gonna have a nice little linen closet. In between the two bedrooms, we're gonna have this nice bathroom that comes with the granite cabinet space below our toilet. Same backsplash that we saw in the master um, here in the bathtub. I like the nice handles, the kind of like the rustic handles that they have going on. And here is the last bedroom of the home. Same dimensions, 12 by 11. 
nice closet similar similar idea similar concept as the other guest room with the natural light coming in from the window and that is it for the house let's go ahead and take a look at the lots my friends now stepping out here to the back patio space first thing that you notice is this one has a back patio the first house didn't now Personally, if you're from Florida, you want to make sure you at least have some covered space just because the weather is always amazing and you want to be outside. So in the first house, you have the front patio, which is great. It's probably a little bit more dynamic, uh, but here you do have the back patio. It's not too expensive to put, you know, put one in a house, but here we are. This is the backyard. This house, uh, the difference is it's going to be a little bit elevated. So you're going to have a, li a little bit of a slope. Um, but also this isn't too bad because your house is elevated from the front yard. So all the water is kind of going to drain out um, down below. You're not going to have any issues of flooding essentially, which is a very big plus because we do get rain in Florida. Um, it's no hidden secret and that is it. So right over here, we're going to find the well water. Here in Florida, we have the Florida aquifer below the ground um, and essentially they, pump, they drill down and they get water from the Florida aquifer and they pump it into this thing. This is the filter and then it drains into the house. Um, I do recommend if you do live in Florida with well water, even city water, I recommend getting a water softener just because the water in Florida does tend to be a little harder. A few more sediments that they got to clean out through. If you get a water softener, it really gets the job done. Um, so, but anyways, well water has its pros and cons than uh, just like the city water does. Now that is it for this house. Now we're going to get inside, talk about all the finances that you need to know about both properties. Let's get it. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen, at the very end of the tour, and we're about to get into some deep diving details about the finances on this home, what your credit needs to look like, how you can actually calculate your income or how much you can uh, uh, qualify for, and also what your down payment closing costs are gonna look like, my recommended offer. So real quick, pause this video, go get pen and paper, get some notes down because this is gonna be some very important stuff for you guys. So first things first, the price of the first property that we saw today was priced at $269,000. $269,000. The tax amount, yearly tax amount on that property was $3,500 per year estimated. On new construction homes, um, if it's built that year, they can only estimate how much the taxes are gonna be. They can't actually give you a real taxable value. At the end of the year, that's when they send you a, a bill based off the taxable uh, value of the home. So that is the estimated taxable value, $3,500 per year. Now, if you are a Florida resident for one year, you can qualify for the homestead tax exemption, which takes off $50,000 off the taxable value of your house. So instead of paying taxes on 269, you're gonna be paying taxes on 249, on a house of 249. What that looks like in perspective, it saves you about three to $400 on your uh, yearly tax amount. So around 3,000, 30, 3,100. With that being said, there is no HOA, there is no CDD in this area of Ocala. Um, this is Marion Oaks, no HOA, no CDD, no problems. Now, with that being said, the second property, the one we just toured right now, this one is listed at $264,000, my friends. $264,000, so $5,000 less than the first property we saw. And I wanna know, which one did you guys like the most? Did you like the first, the second? What were the pros and cons from each? And why would you choose one or the other? Please put that in the comments. I really wanna know what you guys think because uh, you are the most important people, the consumer, the people who are watching these videos. And really, I appreciate your feedback at all times. Taxes are gonna be exactly the same as the other property, um, just give or take, you know, literally $20, $30. Um, so with that being said, let's get straight into it. Let's say you wanted to qualify for one of these homes. You really, really liked it and you're like, hey, you know, maybe I can see a future here in Ocala, not even in Ocala, in Central Florida, in Florida in general, or even in another state. This is gonna be valuable information. First things first, we have something called an FHA loan. This is Florida uh, Federal Housing Association loan, uh, meant for first time home buyers with maybe not the most excellent credit with 680 and above. 
With that being said, to qualify for FHA, you'd only need a 580 credit score and higher, okay? On 580 credit score and higher, and you can qualify for an FHA, uh, or you can meet the credit requirements, credit score requirements for FHA. A down payment on an FHA loan is three and a half percent of the purchase price minimum. So the house we're sitting in right now is 264,000. Three and a half percent is $9,240. This is the down payment on a house with an FHA loan right here that we're standing in. Closing costs are typically gonna be about 3% of the purchase price of the property. So that's gonna be, so you're looking around 16 to $17,000 total to purchase a property like this. But wait, closing costs, if you have a realtor, I'm here to negotiate that. I'm here to make the sellers pay for it. And there are a lot of different tri tricks I have up my sleeve to make sure we can negotiate closing costs paid for you guys. So what I would say on a property like this, you can purchase it with less than $10,000. And it happens all the time. I have a long list of clients that you know can, can tell you that this is exactly what we do and we do it the best we can. Now, let's say you already own three properties, whatever it is, but you do wanna purchase this as a primary. Um, you can utilize something called a conventional loan uh, primary residence. Th this is gonna be 5% down payment um, for a conventional loan. So 264 is $13,200. So I'd say less than 14, $15,000, you could buy this home with a conventional primary residence loan. To qualify for a, um, a conventional loan, you're gonna need um, a 680 credit score and above. The higher your credit score is, the more fa favorable interest rate you are gonna get from your lender. Um, and then you can slap some points on there and drop your interest rate even more. So that is something, so 580 and above for FHA, 680 and above for conventional. Conven what are the differences? What are the pros of, why would I go conventional when I can go FHA, which is a lesser down payment? The reason being is with the conventional loan, once you hit 20% equity in the home, so let's say a house is $300,000 and you have about $60,000 in equity in the house, you can do a reevaluation on the home and you don't have to pay any private mortgage insurance. Private mortgage insurance can range anywhere from $150 to $300 per month on your mortgage payments. So if you put 20% down on a, on a home, you don't pay any private mortgage insurance right off the bat. So that is a huge plus for anybody looking to, you know, maybe has a little extra cash, wants to put the 20% down to really lower their monthly payment. Um, with that being said, those are the two main primary residence loans that we are seeing in today's market. Of course, you can purchase cash as well. And we're gonna talk about the recommended offers on cash uh, later, later down the road. So now let's go ahead and talk about any veterans out there. First and foremost, I love you guys so much. You guys, I appreciate everything you do for this country. It allows a person just like me to come out here and record videos and you know do what I do. So I appreciate you very much. And I love working with you guys and fighting to get you the best deal. With that being said, v veterans, you guys have an amazing VA loan program where you put 0% down. So if there are any veterans out there, I wanna let you know I can help you purchase a property with literally zero money down. All you have to do is put an escrow deposit and then I get it returned at closing uh, with an addendum that is written once we, once we sign the contract. Um, with that being said, I can negotiate closing costs for you guys. You have 0% down. You can literally purchase a property with $0. So that's something fantastic about the, the VA loans. Credit requirements are a little iffy. You can definitely have it a little lower. I've seen people get qualified with 500, 520 credit scores. Um, but what I would say, if you're a veteran out there and are interested, just give me a call and, um, and we'll get it done for you. With that being said, now let's go ahead and do some calculations. If you are somebody who is interested and wanna know how much you can qualify for, we're gonna run some very simple numbers. So first things first, I'm gonna give an example of maybe a family is making $80,000. Um, so husband makes 40, wife makes 40, um, or whatever arrangement there is, if you're single making $80,000, whatever it is, let's just go based off of $80,000 salary per year, $80,000, okay? 
Now, what we're gonna do is we wanna find the monthly payment. How much are you making monthly from this $80,000? So we're just gonna divide that by 12. That gives us $6,666 per month of income, okay? With that being said, um, we're gonna divide it by two. That's gonna give you 3,333. The reason why we divide your monthly income by two is because the banks aren't gonna lend you 100% of your monthly income towards a mortgage payment because you have other costs. You have your kids, you have groceries, you have insurance. These are expenses that you're gonna have. So they want you to at least have 50% of your income put aside for all your expenses. So this is what you're gonna find, 50% of your income. And then you have to subtract your debts from this number, from 50% of your monthly income. So debts include car payments, student loans, um, child support payments, if you have a boat, boat payments, whatever you have an outstanding loan on, credit cards, whatever you have outstanding loans on, you're that monthly payment, you wanna add it up and then subtract the debts from the 50% of your monthly income. So let's say you have two car payments, both of them are 300 bucks, you don't have any credit card payments, you don't have any of this, only two car payments, 300 bucks a month, that's $600 in debts, so you're gonna subtract this number by 600. That gives you $2,733. That is the number that you can qualify monthly um, for a mortgage payment. Now, to find out what this is in a real purchase price for a house, all you gotta do is divide by 0 0.007, and that gives you what you can qualify for, $390,000. That is a rough estimate. It could be 20,000 less, 20,000 above. A lot of it just depends on the lender, the interest rate, the tax amount, the HOA, variables are, are in this, but this gives you a very good estimate as to what you can afford. Essentially, this was a formula that a lender taught me and it's been very useful. So please utilize it. If you're Even if you're in another country, another state, please utilize it. It'll definitely give you a better point of view of what you're able to do. Um, last but not least, my friends, let's go ahead and get into recommended offers. So on the first property, um, I noticed it's been on the market a little bit longer. It's been on the market about 60 days. So it's listed at 269. My recommended offer starting out would be about 262, asking for three and a half percent in closing costs credit. So 262 and three and a half percent in closing costs. I'm asking for $9,170 in closing cost credit for you guys. Now, FHA loans, you can get up to 6% in credit from the seller's conventional loan. You can only get 3%. If you're putting 20% down on conventional, you can get up to 6%. Um, but anyways, recommended offer would be 262 with 3.5% in closing costs. I will let you know the sellers probably won't accept that, but that's okay. Where we really wanna end up at the very minimum is asking price with 3% in closing costs. So all your closing costs are paid, you only have to pay your down payment. That is the goal, that is the minimum. That is what I fight for for every single client. With that being said, on this home that we're in right now, 264, um, I'd, write, I'd put it in at around 258 with 3.5%, maybe even 4%. A lot of it depends if there are other people interested in the house, um, but if let's say no one was, no offers, no interest, no showings, I'd put it, you know, around 258, asking for three and a half, four percent in closing cost credit. Now, let's say you're a cash buyer. On the first house at 269, I'd go in straight at two, 258, 255. You know, I'd be asking, honestly, I'd really start at 255 and just say, hey, this is what I got, cash money, close in two weeks, easy deal. On this house at 264, I'd go in at 250, 249. And then, you know, maybe there might be a little bit of wiggle room that you might have to up it a thousand or two thousand dollars, but it's good to get aggressive early and really just feel out the seller, see how they feel, see how they take the offer. And then based off that, you understand what they're thinking, and that's where we really start negotiating. So that is it, my friends. I hope this was valuable information. If you enjoyed this content today, please make sure to go back to past videos because there is a lot more of this and especially a lot of different types of houses. I have bigger houses on acres of land um, with custom homes on it. So make sure to have some fun, go through my channel, and, and that is it for today. I hope you guys have a blessed evening, a blessed day, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.